All right, so check this one out. I meant to get around to this when I saw it, but um, I guess I'm getting around to it now. But anyway, a, a teacher was fired up in Michigan from her job at a preparatory uh, high school for rapping or for her rap career. Um, and, and, and this led to a lot of mixed reactions. Some people agreed with the school firing her and some people didn't agree with it. And there was a petition going around that uh, got some signatures, you know, trying to get her job back. Uh, but when I saw this, it, it made me think about, um, you know, the policies of the places that you work for. Like, you know, are people actually reading this stuff that they agree to? And, um, you know, it, it's just something that just kind of, you know, came up, you know, in my head. And I was thinking about that. But, uh, yeah, let's check this one out. And then I'm going to give you my thoughts about the situation. But we begin tonight with a former teacher at a Taylor Charter School who says she was fired because of her passion outside of the classroom. Thank you so much for joining us for 7 Action News at 6. I'm Carolyn Clifford. And I'm Mike Duffy. She's pursuing a rap career and says that a parent complained after seeing her videos online. 7 Action News reporter Darren Cunningham spoke with the former educator and reached out to the school to find out more about the issue. Nobody even knew I was a rapper until the parent kept continuously complaining. Most high baby going crazy like the 80s. Most high baby going Dominique Brown, whose rap name is Drippin' Honey, has been an educator for seven years and started teaching history at Taylor Preparatory High School in August. But all that came to an abrupt end months later, after she says a parent came across one of her rap videos. The first meeting that I had was like the principal and the dean. They had told me that the parent wished to stay anonymous and she felt as if she didn't like my rap career and that I was a bad influence on the kids because I rap. She says she was fired in February because she's a rapper. Before the firing, around Thanksgiving, she says there were meetings and an ultimatum. My mind and my heart was telling me two things. I'm just, I couldn't see myself like giving up my other passion just because somebody didn't like it. And to, they said erase all your content. That was the ultimatum, erase all your content. I'm just like, respectfully, I can't do that. Brown acknowledges the profanity in her lyrics, but she says that has nothing to do with Taylor Prep and the positive impact she's had on her students and the community. Is it that they didn't like your rapper career or was it that they didn't like necessarily the content? Um, the meetings were so like one-sided to where they only told me what somebody didn't like. They didn't tell me as if you did this wrong, you did that wrong. So, and that's why I also, in my behalf, I'm like, well, send me what, what's, what am I doing wrong in writing? The writing was on the wall. Despite that, in December, she won Teacher of the Month. In February, on her last day, she created a music video with her students that has since gone viral. As a parent, um, we we long for teachers who, who support our children. Um, and who inspired them. And she was one of those teachers. So um, really, truly disappointed. Christina Lynn says her son, an 11th grader, started a petition in support of Miss Brown, gathering over 200 student signatures. Lynn says she's seen Brown's videos and that they are no different than any other hip hop video a child can access on social media. For me, it doesn't matter what you do outside of, um, you know, the education structure. Like once you leave, that particular building and you go on with your life then you do whatever you do. Brown says she misses her students and making an impact. These kids got their own goals, their own aspirations. So I'm just trying to see how I can help them. I've been reaching out to the school all day, trying to get their side of the story. I was assured someone would get back with me after another call and another conversation. Still no response. As soon as we get the school side, we'll be sure to bring that to you. In the meantime, Miss Brown says she is reaching out to an attorney regarding her termination. In Taylor, Darren Cunningham, 7 Action News. All right, man. So, so she, she's reached out to an attorney about her, I guess, being fired. And, um, you know, it, here, here's my thing. And, and this is something that people have to remember. And that is most employment in the United States is at will. Now, in this situation, she was doing something where she wasn't on the clock. Uh, an anonymous parent told the school about you know what she what she was doing or what she posted online and um like i said yeah most most uh most employment in the united states is at will and michigan is an at will state and people can be terminated at any time without notice and without reason and employees can quit without notice at any time as well so um 
But what you post on social media, what you post online, even though it's your, your life, even though you feel like your uh, social and your work lives are separate, um, you can actually face discipline or in this case, dismissal uh, for what you post online. Um, so, I, so I think it's important to read and become familiar with the terms and conditions of your employment, because even though you're off the clock and you should be able to do what you want, you're still a representative of that institution. And as long as you continue to draw that check from uh, whatever uh, organization that pays you, then you're considered a representative of that organization. And with something like this, the, the, the school, they're going to try to separate themselves from this as much as possible. So anything that has a negative impact, I guess, on the image of that school, that's what they're going to do. They're going to separate from uh, from from that uh, situation. And it could have been a thing where the, the parent, this anonymous parent, they kept pushing the issue, kept pushing the issue um, until, you know, the, the, the school folded, you know. But um, when you work for these places, when you work for these companies, these institutions, these organizations or whatever, when you work for somebody else, understand that the rug can be pulled from up under you at any moment. And if it's not anything to do with discrimination, then they don't have to give you an explanation as to why you're being fired. I mean, it, I, it shouldn't be that way, but but that's that's what it is, you know. Um, and that's the chance that you take when you have to rely on somebody else for a job and a paycheck. And what I really want to know, which I haven't seen, you know, much talk about, is what were the terms and conditions of her employment at that school? which she would have had to agree to and sign some papers about. And if there was something in that, um, in, in those conditions of her employment related to social media postings, then she may have been in violation of that because it's not uncommon for these places to have guidelines and policies in place when it comes to social media, where employees, they can't post anything, um, you know, anything like explicit, obscene, uh, offensive, profane, hateful, threatening, harmful, defamatory, uh, harassing or discriminatory. So, you know, that that may be a thing where like they kind of looked at that and they probably went back into that, you know, because they keep that stuff on file. You know what I mean? So maybe it was a thing where when she first started working there, she may have signed some stuff and maybe she forgot about it or just didn't read it. You know what I'm saying? But all I'm saying is that you got to read those things. You have to read those things and, and know what you're signing and what you're agreeing to. Because, I mean, now she's gone and got an, attor uh, an attorney. And who knows? I mean, they, they go approach with a lawsuit. Uh, the, all the school has to do is go back and get that file and say, hey, look, this is what you signed to on such and such date about postings on social media. So if it's something like that, then, you know, they kind of, you know, they, they, they're kind of covered. The school is covered. You know what I'm saying? So you got to make sure that you know what you're signing your name to and what you're agreeing to uh, read it over. I know there's been places where I kind of went into the work and I looked at these things and it's maybe like one or two sheets of um, it's like a, what is it like a code of conduct type of thing, you know, and you had to read it. And I went through every single page at least twice. But that's what you have to do um, before you agree and sign your name to something. And don't let people rush you into just signing stuff. Because I know some people at these jobs, they could be pushy and they can get you. To, oh, well, just sign this, sign this, sign this. Oh, did you sign this form yet? Did you sign that form yet? Um, and I, I've seen it where people would, wouldn't even take the time to read it because other people were, were rushing them. It may be like your boss or a manager or something. They rushing you to sign it because they they just trying to check, a bo uh, check the box, you know, at the end of the day. They got to have everybody in their department sign this form and so if you haven't signed the form they're gonna rush you to try to sign it but don't let them rush you into just signing your name on something and you don't even know what you're agreeing to so it's just a little something to think about and uh hopefully everything works out for her and hopefully you know she gets to pursue whatever you know her passion is with this whole rap thing and you know hopefully it works out for her but you got to read these documents that you're signing so take care stay safe and uh i'll see y'all on the next one peace